What is up? I'm Marcel and welcome back to The Modern Filmmaker. In this video, we're going over the three things that you need to know for smoother playback in DaVinci Resolve 16. So the first thing we're gonna go over because it's just not quite as obvious as it could be is file types. And trust me when I say, not every file type is created equal, especially when it comes to editing. And this is not just for DaVinci Resolve, but for any video editing software in NLE. So the camera I'm shooting on right now, the GH5, shoots in H.264 and H.265. And this is pretty common among all DSLRs, uh, like the Sony A7 series, the Fuji XT series, and even the Canon Rebel series, all the way up to the 1DX. Uh, they all use a H.264 or H.265 codec, as well as a lot of smartphones, like this Note 10 here, also uses H.264 or H.265 files. So it may seem like this H.264 is probably the codec to use for just about anything, given the fact that it's so ubiquitously used among smartphones and cameras, uh, but actually this is not made to edit with at all. H.264 was not made for editing. It was actually made to fit a large amount of information or high quality into a small file type. That way it could be stored on a phone or on a small SD card on a camera. And that's why when you get into uh, the Blackmagic 6K or 4K, you see a lot of people using a small hard drive. I know I have one second. You'll see a lot of people use one of these. It's actually a solid state hard drive that you can plug straight into the Blackmagic cameras to record very fast at a very large rate. And why on our smartphones we have those tiny little micro SD chips and then in our DSLRs we have these tiny guys. H.264 is actually specifically made for these small tiny little cards or for devices that cannot write or read that fast. Now as far as the computer is concerned, the H.264 is actually like a compressed file. So it's almost like a zip file that you have to take out of the zip before you can use it. Our computers actually have to decode or decompress the H.264 or H.265 file before it can play it back. Now, this may work pretty well if you've got a media player set up and you're watching a movie or a clip that a friend sent or if you're watching a video on a phone. If you're just watching one video file at a time, H.264 makes all the sense in the world for transforming, for sharing, uh, for playing back, for saving storage space. But when you stack them in an editing timeline, and you've got a bunch of H.264 files that the computer's trying to access, decode, and decompress all at the same time, that is one easy, very simple way that you could run into smooth playback issues. And just because it's a small file type doesn't mean it's the best to use. Personally, when I used to work in Premiere, I would use the Adobe Media Encoder to switch all of my MP4s over to DNHR, which is a very high uncompressed file type to use on PCs. Now ProRes is like the equivalent of DNHR on Macs, and I'm sure if you're a Mac user, you've heard the word ProRes a time or two. Uh, it's very popular to edit with, to finish with, um, all steps along the way, ProRes or DNHR are actually very popular. And while they do take up a lot more storage space, they are perfect on the computer for editing. And I highly suggest using a DNHR, a DNHD, or a ProRes, or even a Blackmagic RAW to edit with instead of an MP4. And if you can, convert your MP4s or H.264 files to something like a ProRes or DNHR before you edit and it'll give you actually a much smoother experience. On to tip number two, and that would be to like this video. Apparently the more videos of mine you like, the smoother a playback you end up getting in DaVinci Resolve. It's pretty crazy, but it is true. <clears throat> On to tip number two. Fortunately, the great people at Blackmagic Design know all about file types and they are one step ahead of us. Uh, so if we jump in the program here, I've got a clip pulled up in the color tab. Uh, it's got a pretty heavy, intense grade on it. If I do the before, uh, you can see that this is just log from the GH5. And then after, we have really got this thing popping. I've got noise reduction on here. I've got all kinds of, I've got a little bit of glow effect on here. I've got exposure compensation. Um, I've got some power windows and qualifiers here. Here I have the sky and some of the blue from the city. I have a gradient power window. I have a power window just for the bridge. So I can kind of make that bridge pop just by itself. Um, I have quite a bit of things going on here. Uh, and it doesn't want to run back smooth on the GH5's MP4 H.264 file. And if I try to play this back uh, just from the MP4 graded, I'm going to get some pretty rough frame rates. I'm getting 18 frames, 19 frames a second, barely 19 frames a second. And this is because if I go back to the edit tab, I've got just the MP4 here. Now, if I go up to the project settings under file, 
project settings. That's where optimized media comes in and is so important. You guys have heard me talk about optimized media before. I'm sure you've heard it from other people, other places, but it is so important. I hope you understand that now that you know a little bit about file types. So in the project settings, under master settings, you have your timeline resolution and frame rate. And then if you go down, you have optimized media and render cache. And here you have a few options. You can go to optimized media resolution, which you could knock this down to something like half or quarter. Uh, I'm working in 4K right now. So if I were to go down to half, I'd be at 2K. Uh, I personally would like the color in 4K. Uh, so let me try to leave that just at its original resolution. And I'll move on to optimized media format. And you can see this is already set to DNHR. They're already one step ahead of us. They know what file type runs smooth inside the program. So if I click this drop down menu, you've got a few different options here. You've got uh, your GoPro Cineform 16 bit, your GoPro Cineform 10 bit, and then your DNHR options. Now, DNHR, uh, these first three, LB, SQ, and HQ, are all 8 bit file types. So, not great for grading, but if you were just editing, you could go down to these and really just keep things moving. Um, now, HQX is actually uh, 12-bit, and 444 HDR is also 12-bit. Uh, HQ stands for high quality, SQ stands for standard quality, and then LB stands for low bandwidth. So for me personally, I'm gonna go with HQ just for now, uh, just for some editing purposes. If I'm trying to get smooth playback from these uh, MP4 H.264 files with a heavy grain, uh, then I'll just take this down to the DNHR HQ at the same resolution. So we'll still be looking at some pretty high quality files. Now, if I click save, right click on this file and go to generate optimized media, boom. Now this will only take a few seconds to generate this optimized media. And yes, this will take up more storage space on your hard drive, but guys, it's worth it. And my best advice, if you are kind of skimping on hard drive space, if you don't have that much to spare, then you know do optimized media for your current project, finish out the current project, and then you can come up here to playback and you can go to delete optimized media and it'll delete the optimized media for this project in particular. Uh, and you also have the use optimized media button here and you can click on this under playback um, to kind of see what your original quality looked like. If you want to check your original quality with your color grade and then go back to optimized media back to the edit tab, that's how I would do that. And now if I go playback this MP4 file, now you can see that we're getting great frame rates, 29.97, the exact frame rate this whole timeline set to. So now just because we did the optimized media, now we've got smooth playback. Now I can go on to do more color adjustments or add transitions and effects um, because guys, we don't want the computer having to crank through decoding the file, then doing the color grade, then it has to do the effects or transitions. I mean, that is so much for the computer to have to get through as well as it's trying to get through any other files that might be on the timeline uh, or in your edit screen. So that right there is tip number two and one of my go-tos. I do this too often. Optimized media is too powerful, guys. And if you're not used to it, just try to get used to it. I know it's weird at first having to convert your files just to work on a project, but guys, it'll make a world of difference. So let's move on. So last but not least, tip number three. This is what I use in every project. And again, if you have not liked this video, make sure to do that. It will give you smoother playback in DaVinci Resolve 16. But if I hop in the program here, you can see I've got the same clip I had just a second ago with the optimized media, but I've actually added a couple more nodes of noise reduction. So now when I go to play it back, even with optimized media, I'm getting some pretty choppy playback. It says 32 frames a second, but obviously we're not getting that. Uh, that's pretty clear here. Um, but all you have to do, one thing, and I do this almost at the beginning of every project, is I go up to playback and then down to proxy mode. Now you don't have to be using proxies for this to work. That's just what it's called proxy mode. You go to proxy mode and it says half or quarter resolution. So now I can actually drop this down to half resolution and it'll give me a half resolution preview screen. Um, that way, if I go to render it now, it'll still render in full resolution, but with this half resolution proxy mode on, it will give me a little less quality visually, but it'll give us much better playback. Now we're back to our 29.97 frames a second, getting smooth frame rates. And there's another thing you can also do if you're dealing with, let's say, a transition. If I were to scoot this back into this clip and let's say throw on a transition, just like a normal cross dissolve, let's just do that. So now it's kind of choppy in the, so now it's kind of choppy. So what can I do? I can come back up here to playback mode. I can try to go down to quarter resolution 
which will take me down to about 1080 because that's a, that's one quarter of 4K, and that's what I'm working with right now. If I try to play this back, okay, it looks it's better, but it's still bad. It's, it's better, but it's still bad. So if I come up here to playback and I go to render cache, I can go to smart, and what this will do now is it'll cache any effects or uh, transitions or noise reduction even. That's why you'll see this red line over this entire clip because usually um, if you just had two clips and a transition, it would only cache the transition, uh, meaning pretty much render out the transition. That way when you try to play it back, it's silky smooth. Let me do that for you again, silky smooth. But now in this case, it's also going to render the whole clip because I have noise reduction and an effects, a glow effect, I believe, on this clip in the, in the color grade. So now, uh, now that it's rendered out the entire clip, I can actually come up here, proxy mode and off, and it'll just play this back at full quality with all my noise reduction layers, my uh, glow effect, my transition. Uh, now it'll pretty much do everything. So if your edits are set in stone, if you've already made the edits that you wanna make and you're moving on to you know further down the timeline, then go ahead and turn that smart uh, render cache on. That way you can have the computer kind of render out what you've done so far. That way you can go back and check your work, check the timing, um, check the flow, and you don't have to worry about any kind of choppiness when it gets to the transitions or the more complicated effects. So I hope this helped you guys. I hope you guys at least learned a little something, something new that you may not have known before. And if you did, if this video helped at all, please click that like button down there. It would really help me and the channel out. And feel free to subscribe if you like videos on DaVinci Resolve. That's what this channel is all about. And definitely leave any comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. I always reply. And until next time, guys, I'm Marcel, and this has been The Modern Filmmaker. Peace!